Hi, I'm Grace Simon with the New Doors Real Estate Team and I'm here once again with my dear friend Richard McLeod, known as the History Hound of Newmarket. If there's anything that you want to know about her heritage and um, just the, the background of what Newmarket is all about, this is the man that you want to speak to, Richard. And uh, today we're, spe we're going to specifically be speaking about the Heritage Act. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Yes. No, we're excited. Welcome. Tonight. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> it's yes. good to be with I'm you. I'm back again. <laughs> yes, this after, uh, tonight we're going to be doing a presentation at the library, and we're going to talk about the Heritage Act. Now, a lot of people say, oh boy, that's a pretty dry subject. Why would you want to do that? Well, the reason is that uh, I've noticed that people really have no idea what the Heritage Act actually says. Now, there's all kinds of myths about what it says, how you know the town is going to force you to to, to uh, be designated and they're going, you're not yeah. going to be able to put a flower bed in, things like this, which of course is, is all not true. So tonight we're going okay. to spend time and we're going to talk about uh, what the Heritage Act actually says and uh, what the do's and don'ts are. These are really important things, especially when people are looking to, to move into a heritage area and they're terrified of, like you said, of buying a home that has heritage designation. Um, and there are so many questions that I cannot answer uh, fully or um, the last thing that we want when somebody buys a heritage home um, is that there are limitations that they didn't know about it. So when they want to go and do a specific job project on their property, it's really important to know beforehand, before you buy a home with heritage designation on it, that you know exactly what the, what the do's and the don'ts are. Now, Richard, for people that are interested in purchasing a heritage designated home, where do they go to find that information? How do they find if there's, because there's lots of old homes that are in the downtown um, neighborhoods of Aurora and Newmarket um, that have plaques, but that doesn't necessarily mean. So it could explain there's that actually, to us. There's actually only 45 uh, uh, houses that are actually designated in Newmarket. A lot of people think there's hundreds. So it's actually only 45. Okay. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is that you can find a complete listing on the town's website. If you go to the town's website or you go to Google and you, you type in designated properties, it will bring you up a, a list of all the designated properties uh, in Newmarket uh, and their location. So, you know, it's fairly simple to find out. But you made a good point because a lot of people think that, that a designated house is the same as a plaque house. And of course it isn't. A plaque house is just... Uh, really done for the homeowner's benefit so that they can be proud about their property. And what but this does, one was. Okay. But <laughs> the confusing thing is designated properties are usually plaque, but just because it's plaque doesn't mean it's designated, which I, is interesting. I have a, an interesting one where I see on, um, I think it's on Queen Street, as you just head up the hill past Prospect, there's a gentleman's house plaque on there. What is a gentleman's house? Uh, back uh, what was it? back in the in the good old days, as they used to say, <laughs> what happens is that uh, the uh, there were people who were uh, said to be of independent means. So oh, basically, okay. they called them a gentleman. Really, what it meant was nobody really knew what they did for a living. Uh, they appeared to be living on the, I guess, the good graces of of, uh, uh, of their own investments. Uh, a lot of people back then. Uh, if you had a, a occupation, people look down on you. But if you could say, no, I, I'm a gentleman. In fact, I, I have so much money, I don't need to really to work. So that's what it meant. So okay. this is what a gentleman was, yes. That is so interesting. interesting. I didn't know, I'm like, gentleman, what, is it, what does that mean? I can see it uh, often, I'm like, that's, that's interesting. I didn't know the full uh, meaning of it, now I, now I do. And, really and, and those, uh, those uh, plaques are, are really quite interesting. You can learn so much. There's a gentleman named Ivan, uh, Isaac Silver, uh, who is really our, our first real estate man. Uh, you'll see his name uh, on several, several houses around Newmarket. Uh, oh. he, would, he would build houses or he would buy houses and then he would uh, fix them up for people and then he would resell them. So, Brilliant. You know, so you'll see, yeah, so he was yeah. one of the first. Uh, and he was the first, one of the first. Well, real one of the first that's certainly around here. Newmarket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that is so interesting. So, if you're interested in learning about the Heritage Act, you're you're interested in living uh, in a heritage community or not, you just want to gain more knowledge, more understanding, then Richard McLeod, again, is the person that you want to speak to. So are these the kinds of things that you're going to be discussing yeah, tonight? Yeah, tonight we'll, we'll talk, of course, about what the Heritage Act is, but we'll also talk a little bit about uh, 
what the Heritage Act says uh, for the individual uh, house owner. For instance, we'll, we'll talk about the fact that it's only the outside of your house that's designated. So you can do whatever you want inside, it's just that you can't change the outside. Uh, and uh, as well, people panic and say, well, you know, I'm going to be forced to do this, and that's not the case. There is a process uh, that the uh, town needs to go through in order to designate a property, which has been stipulated by the uh, Ontario government. Uh, it's quite, uh, it's quite, uh, uh, shall we say, a tedious uh, process because they have to make sure that it, it, it ticks all the boxes literally on, on the form. So Richard, if somebody wants to change their, the heritage home, designated home, from it being a gray house to a white house or a white house to a gray house, are they able to change the color? Because I've heard they're so restrictive even on the color of a home. On it'll, a it'll depend property. when when your house is designated they will indicate why specifically it was designated so oh, if you okay. have a situation where uh, it always was a white house then unfortunately it always has to be a white, white house. house so that is but true. Uh, but right. if it wasn't designated for its color but oh. for the structure that that's not a case same thing as uh, a lot of people will say to me when I'm going around uh, doing my thing uh, people say to me well, you know I, I have a veranda on my house and I would prefer that the veranda not be there. So what I always tell them to do is to go uh, to Heritage Newmarket and take a look at the actual paperwork that was done when the house was designated. If there's no mention of the veranda, uh, and there usually will be, it'll tell you when the veranda was added. If it wasn't uh, uh, designated in respect to that veranda, then that is not an issue. And also the other thing you have to remember too is that all you really need to do is to go to the town and they will tell you specifically what you can and cannot do. Okay. So the town, and in which department do you go to the town? Uh, that would be the planning department. Okay, and, so you go and, to the planning they would, they would talk, department. Yes, and, okay. and I'm sure Mr. Royal will love me saying this, but Dave Ruggle just loves to talk to the public <laughs> about uh, people who want to do things to their house. But also, as okay. I say, it's the outside. So that means if, if you buy a heritage house and you want to put in a, uh, a really funky garage and a pool, then uh, you could do so because that's outside. That has no... These are great things that uh, I didn't necessarily knew what the approach was on it and, and uh, you know, you kind of approach things cautiously and you find out as you go. But um, for those that are, are realtors or people that are interested in heritage homes, Richard has a lot of gold nuggets and I hope that you've, uh, you've learned some already today. Uh, but again, come out to his event tonight at the local Newmarket at, at, Loba, at, Library. At, at the library. At seven o'clock. Seven till what? Uh, generally, I, I talk a lot, so we probably <laughs> go until about quarter to nine. Till quarter to nine. Okay, so you definitely want to thank you, Richard. So thank you. Much. I've learned you. so much, and I, hopefully, maybe we can do a little heritage walk and talk about some of the plaques uh, yeah. that are around Newmarket Aurora area. That would be a lot of That'd fun. That'd be terrific. Mm, thank you very so much. much. Great to see Take you. Take care. Take care.